Welcome back to CF Tesla. Now, as I have spent more time with Tesla software update version 11.3.6 or version 2022.45.15, my opinion has changed. In my initial first impressions drive, I said things like this. We're gonna slow down here and we're gonna blow right through that corner. I don't know, 3.6. I'm, I'm not liking this exact uh, scenario here. I wasn't convinced that this update really brought many steps in terms of improvements. In fact, there were many areas I thought it actually took a few steps back. It wasn't a knock on the software. We had just rolled out triple sec. And so I was expecting it to go back a little bit and then eventually catch up and become better more progressively. But now that I have spent a ton of hours with this software update, I found there's a lot to really like about it. So today we're gonna to talk about three big ones that I've noticed and some smaller ones that I see improvements on that aren't necessarily new. Now keep in mind, these are just my experiences. You might have experienced these completely differently or maybe they're not even an issue for you in the past or maybe you had these improvements in previous updates, but these are my observations as of what I'm experiencing right now in my car. Now, if you disagree with me, great. Put it down below in the comments. Let's have a discussion about it. If you got something else your car is doing that is good or bad, put it down in the comments. Let's chat about it. Now, first up, an Area that we heard talked about a lot with full self drive beta and that is unprotected left turns and the reason why i'm bringing it up is because in my drives the last couple of days I've noticed some big improvements and it started doing things that for me, okay, on my drives, I've never seen it do before. All right, so first we're gonna take a look at this first unprotected left turn. We're gonna come out of this parking lot right here, we're at a stop sign, and I'm loving watching this animation as it jumps all over the place, showing me where it's gonna go. So here we are, we're coming up to it. It is two lanes either direction with a turn lane in the middle. You can see the path prediction as it's watching the other cars, and you can see there's a big gap here and the car just goes. This was a really easy one for the full staff drive system, but it does go and center itself right in the middle of that turn kind of merge lane on the right side there. And in the past, like if you're driving down that road, it always keeps to the left, but because it turned into that lane, it did that thing where it centers between the two of them. Again, it doesn't really mean anything. It's just, if someone else was coming up on that road, it would have looked kind of like I was trying to stop them from you know passing me. Uh, but anyway, that's besides the point. It didn't need to use the turn lane at all, so it's kind of an easy one. So let's take a look at the next one. Now this next one is the one that really impressed me, okay? So we stop here at the stop sign, you're seeing all these cars get turned blue as the car is watching their uh, path prediction. And watch that, set, that, that blue line, we're creeping out, we're creeping out, there's cars coming up on my left. We're still creeping forward, Again, you're watching that path prediction. All of a sudden the car goes aggressively. Cars are coming down and look at that. It gets into the turn lane, which I have never seen it do. I've never seen it do that. Then accelerates and takes off with cars coming up behind me in the direction that I was trying to go, which that right there is a massive improvement because on all the previous updates, I've taken the car to that very same exact unprotected left turn. And whether there's cars there or not, I've done this tons of times. It has never one time used that left turn lane. Uh, the center lane, excuse me, what it's done every single time is it has simply waited until there's a big enough gap on both directions of traffic, then it cuts across that center, uh, both direction turn lane. Okay, it's just a center lane you can use depending on you're going left or right, it doesn't matter. It's not only for one direction. I know in previous videos, people have said, oh, that's only for you know turning into the school or something. No, it's not. It's for both directions, okay? And it used it this time, just like it's supposed to, and then got right in its lane. So that was a huge improvement, love seeing that. So then I went back and tried the same thing again. So this one is just about in the exact same location. It's just a little bit further up the hill. I wanna have a little bit different scenery here. Um, similar thing, there was, we had to wait for a few cars coming on my side of the direction, like this car passes here, but there's no cars heading the direction that I am going and the car just crosses all the lanes right into the direction it needed to go. So now it looks like the car, at least in my case, is deciding I can go, even if there's cars coming, I can utilize that center turn lane and then merge into the lane that I'm supposed to be in. And that's a big improvement and here's why. Because I used to sit there in unprotected left turns for a very long time. Pick cars behind me are honking, go use the lane, use the center lane. People a lot of times will pull out of that lane and pile up inside of that center turn lane waiting for their turn to cut in because there's a lot of traffic on that road usually. And so if the car was not willing to go and get in that center lane itself, then all of a sudden now you're getting cars and people all pissed off at you behind you because you should have gone a long time ago. So now the car's making it through there, that's big improvements. And of course, we'll keep watching it 
it and testing that to make sure this wasn't a fluke, but I got it to do it multiple times where it used that center lane. So that's the first big improvement. Now, this next one is really exciting to me as well because it's allowing me to have more confidence in my car and feel a little bit less tension when I'm driving because of this specific type of update. And that is that the car is able to read the lanes a little bit better and get into the proper lane quicker. So when I turn right here at this red light, it's gonna put me into a turn only lane right here where what it would do in the past was it would keep me in that far right turn lane and then the last second, right as you're about to basically run out of lane, it would instantly cut over really quick, cutting off other cars potentially, or if there was cars there, it wouldn't go. But look what happens here. It right away gets over into that other lane. It doesn't fall to the very end of that turn, like right where that car uh, passed in front of me was where it usually got out of that lane. So this was a massive, massive improvement. And I've run that test over and over and over again on previous updates, and it's never once done what it just did there. So that is an improvement with this specific update. Even the previous update, it wouldn't do it. So that's a big deal for me in my area. Let me know if you guys have situations like that that you've seen improved where it does get in the right lane quicker. Um, that saved me for some kind of hairy situations where I had to take over. In this case, the car did great. Now, next up is roundabouts. And this is an area that the car has gone back and forth with. It started doing really good. Then it kind of did poorly. I tested this before we even had the full South Drive beta. Of course, that was a hopeless case. But now it's constantly making, in my opinion, um, some pretty nice improvements. And here's why. On this first one, there's a crosswalk, very visible, big white lines on the road. It's, it slows down not completely to a stop, but it slows down, notices there's no people around, it takes off, stays well within the lines. You can see it does a great job, doesn't come close to hitting any curbs, gets right through it. But the key for this one was that it stopped for that crosswalk before it just went right through it through, you know, using the yield sign. Now this next one is actually two roundabouts back to back and two different things we got to experience here with each of these different roundabouts. This first one, as we come up to it here, there's actually cars going around the roundabout. You have this police officer here and you can see where the car is actually being being tracked. And then as we're about to go, the car is starting to accelerate a little bit. All of a sudden, more cars pull into it. And you can see they instantly get turned blue. The car recognizes them and it waits for them to go. And then it aggressively takes off as soon as it gets an opportunity. I mean, it worked really, really well. And I love that it waited. I didn't feel like I was going to jet out in front of those cars. In previous videos and previous updates that I've done on this, what happened was I would be sitting there and I would have to keep hitting the brake or t turn off uh, full south drive beta because the car would try to jut out in front of them and go and I had to stop them. That never happened and I went round and round on these multiple times, which is really great. I mean, look at this animation. I love how the animation now zooms way out on this when you get here and you can just see what's happening around you. It's absolutely stunning. I love what Tesla has done with the animations, with the visuals on their screen. Now, when we get to this next one, watch what happens here. The car comes right up to it here and even though there is a crosswalk going through here, you notice the car doesn't even slow down. It's a yield sign. It goes right through the way a normal driver would. There was no people around, so it didn't need to slow down um, and, and goes right through it. And the, the difference here between this one and that very first roundabout was that this was just a different colored crosswalk. The crosswalk was not very well marked. It didn't have big, thick white lines on it. It was just more a lighter colored um, bit of asphalt or concrete, actually, that went across the road where that first one was actually big painted rectangles, white rectangles rectangles going across the road. So the car recognized it was a crosswalk. That's what I'm assuming the difference was between the two of these different crosswalks. So the first one stop for crosswalk. Second one, great at detecting the other cars didn't lurch forward at all. And that third one just went right through because there's no cars around all the ways that I would have handled it if I was driving the car. Now this next one I'm just throwing in here. It's nothing necessarily new. It's been doing this for a bit, but I feel like it's actually getting better. So I'm actually heading into a construction zone here. And look, there's a flag on the right side here and look how far away the car gets away from that driver to protect that driver to make sure that it gives it the maximum safety space while still staying inside of my lane. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. All right, now we're gonna end this video with one last thing here, and that is we're gonna watch the car go up this insane, twisty, very challenging road with 10 mile per hour corners on it and watch how great it does here. 
for the most part. So luckily this time there was no cars coming on this road. So I just let the car do completely its own thing. And it did very, very well getting out this road here. So we're just kind of watching it here. The problem that I saw it was that when it turned to the right is when it had its biggest issues. Let me know if you guys are having that same challenge. Watch as it turns right here. It goes a little bit wide, like right here, like if a car was coming, it'd be kind of sketchy. It did go over those yellow, double yellow lines. I felt the bumps on my tires, but the sharp lefts, it wasn't uh, as big of an issue. I didn't really cross uh, the white fog line. Got kind of close a few different times, but it did pretty good. You can see that it's holding 18 to 20 miles per hour. Look at this turn, super, super tight. In fact, it even turned on the blinker, but it got through it, okay, absolutely perfectly. And you know, you look at the speed limit there, right? it's actually set to 40, but it's keeping it at 20. So the car is making a decision to not go too fast around these corners. I guess there were a few vehicles that came through here. Uh, luckily, they weren't on the sharp corners like or curves in the road like last time um, was. And you can see for the most part, it's really holding its line really well. Last time coming through here, if you guys remember, there was that big truck that came around the corner at the same time I was taking that tight one. Oh, that was scary. Here we are here. We got the blinker on, even though it's not needed, but it's very, very sharp, 10 mile per hour corner. And look at that. The car absolutely handled it. We did hit the double yellow a little bit there. So of course, if there was a car coming towards me, I would have had to intervene right there to make sure it didn't go over the line. But you know what? That's what full self drive is right now. And, and to be honest, that was very, very impressive. I mean, there's some improvement for sure needed there, but for where it's at right now in the beta program, the fact that six months ago, there was no hope of ever coming close to getting up that hill. The fact that we can get up that hill now with minor little setbacks, like crossing over that double uh, yellow line two different times on those different corners, uh, that shows incredible progress. So I'm very excited about this update. There's a, obviously a few things that still need to improve and we're gonna keep watching that. And then overall, there's a lot of progress that is needed before we're ever gonna feel confident to just let the car drive for us and us be relaxed. But we're not here expecting that right now. What we're looking for are incremental improvements in at least one or two areas with each update, not every area, just a couple areas. And in my opinion, this one definitely took a few steps forward in a lot of different areas. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And of course, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more like this. We do drives, we do updates, we do product reviews and all that here on the channel. So if you're, you're again, if you're new, definitely subscribe and I will see you guys on the next video.